Hi guys, welcome to the chapter one test review. Should be rather easy stuff for the most part, and you should do fantastic on this test now, especially if you are watching the review. Okay, so it's going to be similar to this, um, but just be aware of some few major things. Graph each on a number line. All right, draw your number line, boom, boom. Make sure you have zero in there, okay? Make sure zero is included. And from there, you are simply, okay, well, you needed zero anyway. Um, put them all into a decimal um, or something you can kind of recognize. Now, square root of four, you know, is two, but don't forget the negative. So it's negative two. So we're going to need a negative two. Uh, square root of seven and 19 fourths. You type those in your calculator. Uh, quickly here, square root of 7, about 2.65, I won't be super picky, um, notice it is positive, and 19 fourths, uh, if we type that in, uh, about 4.75, okay. Now, when you graph these, I'd like you to be a little more accurate. Um, so we know we're going to need to go up to five, one, two, three, four, five. And we know we need to go down at least negative two, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, 4.75, about here, one, two, three, four. So that's our 19 fourths. 2.65 is about one, two, a little more there. And that again is the square root of seven. And negative two, two, negative square root of four. And of course, zero, make sure you make your points. Um, and that's all there. Identify each property illustrated, okay? Um, remember, keep in mind what's actually moving. Three and two, two and three. They're commuting, they're switching places. Okay, there's no ordering, so it's commutative. Uh, more specifically, you can say of addition. Um, now what's changing in this one? Well, let's see. We see parentheses, so first thing that comes to mind is generally associative. And notice, first they're around the 4 and the 2. Now they're around the 2 and the 3. So the parentheses themselves changed, meaning that that's the associative property. And here we are multiplying. Um, anytime again, you have opposites or reciprocals. So there's an opposite, 10. Also, you end up with different things on each side. Um, this would be our inverse. And again, um, this would be of addition. And from here, if we have the same thing on the left, and we have the same thing on the right. It's like looking in the mirror. So it's your identity. More specifically, multiplication. Those problems there, four minutes and probably should take you even less if you know what you're doing. Okay. Um, be aware of other properties. So distributive. Specifically, um, reverse distribution. So recognizing this in both ways. Okay, that will help you as well. Now, a car can travel 47 miles on a gallon of gas. If the tank contains six gallons of gas, how far can the car travel before the tank is empty? Okay, 
Um, yeah, some of these problems are, or they should be, just about as easy as they are. Well, um, 47 miles per gallon, and it's simply 47. I mean, there's really not too much to think about. Um, times 6, and 47 times 6, um, 282. Okay, miles. Make sure you have units. 282 miles. A recent game, a football team scored 37 points. That's our total. Four of their scores came from touchdowns. They're each worth seven points. Okay, so touchdowns and extra points, I suppose. The remainder of their score came from field goals, worth three points each. How many field goals did the team make? Assuming no other touchdowns or safeties were scored for you football fans out there. So we have 37 total points were scored. We know that they scored four touchdowns at seven apiece. The rest has to be worth their field goals. So three points times field goals. Okay. You don't necessarily need a fancy formula um, if you can solve in your head, but 37 equals 28 plus 3 times our field goals. Meaning out of that, uh, 37 minus 48, or 28, that means they scored 9 points. at three each, so they must have scored three goal goals. Okay, easy peasy stuff. Simplify by using order of operations. Please take your time. Okay, I'm going to go over them probably quickly here. Again, you can use your calculator, but enter it in exactly as it appears, okay? So by hand, you can certainly say, well, this is going to be, so order of operations. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, depending on which they occur. Three times three cubed divided by eight squared. 8 squared is 64. 3 to the third is 3 times um, 27. 3 times 3 times 3. Okay, from there um, you will, let's see here, we have 3 times 27 divided by 64. Order of operation says multiply these together first. 3 times 27. Meaning we have 81. Then we divide by 64. And 81 over 64 is your final answer. I will accept the decimal um, which is about 1.265 but prefer the fraction. Okay. Um, again, you want to do everything in parentheses, not only that, but in brackets then. So this is going to be negative 2 times 2. Um, you can even do division right now. 36 divided by 6. Plus 6. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Plus 6. Do, do, do. Square everything at the end. Negative 4 plus 6 is negative 2. Or positive 2, sorry. Boop, boop. 
squared, and you should have four. Um, I'll be sure to double check these. Okay, so always, if you do it by hand, always check in your calculator. Again, these should be easy points. Simplify by combining like terms. Alrighty, so distributed property, that's going to be R20 minus 8x. Um, be careful with negatives, minus 45 plus 9x. Well, let's see what shakes and bakes. I see 8x, I see 9x, negative 8, so this is going to be x. And um, positive 20 minus 45 is minus 20. Okay, so x minus 25. Um, distribute your negative. That's all you need to do here. 3x minus y minus 2y plus x. Okay, and that's where the mistakes are going to happen. Students are going to forget to distribute your negative. So you're going too fast. Um, 3x plus x is 4x. Uh, negative y minus 2y, be careful with negatives again, is negative 3y, and that's how you can write it there. Solve the equation. Um, Dvorsky, double check all these answers. Okay, um, subtract 11, boom, 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 boom. Careful with negatives, so it's going to be negative 20. and equals negative 4. Um, you type it in, Dvorsky double check, make sure you do that. Um, let's see here, get k to one side. Again, I prefer to keep my k's positive, so I'm going to subtract 6. If you choose to do it differently, that's perfectly fine. Minus 4, minus 4, 3 equals 6k. And don't be afraid of fractions as your answer. That's especially where you can Dvorsky double check. Especially if you get fractions, make sure you Dvorsky double check. Well, 6 times a half is a third, plus 7 is, or is 3, plus 7 is 10. Um, 2 times a half is 6, plus 4 is 10. It works out to me. Um, do not be afraid of decimals. 0.5 times 12 is 6. 0.5 times 10 is 1 half. And fractions are gone. Uh, there's different ways you can go about them. I would just distribute uh, minus 2, minus 2. Da, da, da. Okay, Dvorsky, slow down. Boop, 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 boop. Distributing 0.5 to 10 is actually 5. Okay, that's where you need to take your time. Okay, subtracting 5, subtracting 5, 12 equals 6x. Divide by 6, divide by 6, x equals 2. Again, Dvorsky double checking is where you will really benefit okay I would have noticed that my answer was a little bit weird and crazy not that that won't happen but x equals 2 okay um, lastly so again don't be afraid of fractions negative 10 times 1 fifth that is negative 2x negative 2 times 1 fifth plus 2 2x way out front equals x plus 4. So don't be afraid of fractions. They're okay. Um, combining like terms. 2x minus 2x. Hmm. Whoop. That means all of our x's are gone. 0x. But we still have 2. x plus 4 minus 4 minus 4 x equals negative 2. 
So Dvorsky double checking this because I have a weird thing going on with fractions. Um, negative two plus four equals two times negative two minus 10 times one fifth times negative two minus one fifth. Again, you're just substituting negative two in for x. On the left, I get positive two. And on the right, it looks a little funky at first here, negative four minus 10. If you put this in your calculator, um, you end up with negative three fifths. And it still might seem strange, but if you put that in your calculator or you multiply 30 over five, you get positive six, negative and negative, uh, plus negative four. And certainly they are good to go. So this is the Dvorsky double check. Um, again, it doesn't mean that's your answer. This is truly your answer. But if you want to put that there, Dvorsky double check or DDC, that makes me happy as well. All right, guys. So probably one of the more challenging problems are these perimeter problems. Um, but really, they're not too bad as long as you, of course, review them and you recognize what the problem is saying. <clears throat> so the perimeter, we have a length of 2x plus 7. And we have a width of 3x minus 1. It doesn't necessarily matter which side you have as either. Uh, we also know the perimeter is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. And notice, what we want to find is the area. Area, we know, is length times width. Well, the thing we need to do first is deal with the perimeter, okay? Just like before. So the perimeter we know is 82, which is two times our length, 2x plus seven, plus two times our width, 3x minus one. Okay, so take your time distributing. That means we have 4x plus 14 plus 6x minus 2 equals 82. Uh, we have 10x equals or plus 12 equals 82. We're going to subtract our 12. 70 is then 10x. And x is 7. This is not your answer, okay? It's great, but it's not the answer, okay? I really hope that nobody stops here. Um, double check that you did everything correctly, um, at least at this point. Once you find x equals 7, then you need to do the rest of the problem, which is really easy, actually. It wants to know the area. Okay, well, you know the length is 2x plus 7. And now you have this newfound x as 7. So it's 2 times 7 plus 7 times 3 times 7. That's the x you found minus 1. And you can certainly type this in your calculator. Uh, 2 times 7 is 14, plus 7 is 21. Uh, 3 times 7 is 21. And 20, uh, 21 times 20. Again, don't be a hero. Use your calculator, perhaps. 21 times 20 gives us 420 feet squared. Okay, so that's the area. This is your answer. Okay, that's your answer there. A local concert ticket costs $18.50. You have $150 to buy tickets and popcorn. Popcorn's a typo, actually. 
Uh, you're not buying popcorn at this concert. Sorry. For six people, this includes yourself. How much money is left to buy a concert t-shirt after tickets are paid for? Okay, this one's kind of a problem-solving um, question we have. But you have eighteen fifty per six tickets you need to buy. And you want to know plus x, that's how much money you'll have left, equals your 150. Okay, you don't necessarily need to have this formula here, but if you prefer, you certainly can. So 1850 times 6, that is $111, plus the amount you have left for your t-shirt. That's not too shabby of t-shirt, equals 150. Okay, subtract 111, subtract 111. Again, if you don't do it this nicely, that's fine. And that means you have $39 left to buy a nice t-shirt. Okay. Solving for y. Part 1, I need to see y equals with something x on the other side. Okay. So, solve the equation for y. This is probably the more amount of points, okay? Probably two and a half points or so. Solving for y means we want to get everything that's not y on the other side. So, if I have 12x minus 28y equals 40, I want to move my 12x to the other side. plus 40 equals negative 28. Why? Divide everything by negative 28. Okay, so y is equal to our negative 12 divided by 28. Is three sevenths and forty over twenty eight is ten sevenths make sure your negatives and such are kept track of this is a negative over a negative so it's positive this is a negative over a positive so it's negative and again, that is your part one point. Now, part two, you put six in there. All right, so again, you need to do the hard work first. And then honestly, by doing the hard work, it should actually be easier for you. Three sevenths times six minus 10 sevenths. You shake and bake all that. Ten divided by seven. And again, I would prefer that you write in decimal or fractions. Fractions are preferred if you have a decimal by chance. So I think as a decimal, it's negative point two eight five. Um, that's okay. Again, solving for y first. So I'm going to add x over. I'm going to add x over. So 1 8 y plus 2 equals 4 plus x. What else is over here? A 2, so I need to get rid of it. Just going to rearrange things here. And to get rid of my 1 8, I'm going to multiply each side by 8. So remember, you multiply by the reciprocal. Y equals 
x plus 2 quantity times 8, so 8x plus 16, that's part 1, part 2, put in x, and 8 times 6, 48 plus 16, Uh, 64. Y. That's Y as well. Sorry. So Y equals 64. Part 1, part 2. Again, I need to see the Y equals. There's no way around it. Need to see Y equals X. Y equals X. Looking for a pattern. Again, you're checking out what's occurring between each step. It looks like we're subtracting 3, subtracting 3, subtracting 3. The other thing you need is where you start. Well, here's 0 and 45. So, to be clear, it's going to be y equals what's occurring, your slope, negative 3 times x plus where you start, 40. Five. Um, here, what's occurring each time? It looks like I'm adding 9, adding 9, adding 9. So that's a positive 9x. Where I start is plus 20. Easy peasy. Fitness club, 100 per year. So that's your flat charge each year. In addition to the yearly dues, you can buy smoothies or shakes at three fifty each. So plus three fifty for each shake. That's how much you're paying out of pocket. You budget three hundred dollars for your fitness membership. How many smoothies and shakes? So you only have three hundred to spend. Um, how many can you buy? Okay. So simply here minus one hundred. equals 350 per shake divide by 350 200 divided by 3.5 which is about 57.14 well you can't buy 1.14 of a shake if you do, you're going over budget, so you need to round down meaning that you can only buy 57 shakes max. Okay, solve the inequality. Two points each. Easy, easy stuff. Add six. At six, sorry, there's not much room for these. Um, 19 plus six is 25. Um, less than five x. Again, you don't change the sign when you're adding. Divide by five, divide by five. X is less than five. Easy. Um, 23 across here. Minus seven, minus seven. Negative three x greater than or equal to negative 18. What do you do when you divide by a negative? You change the sign. X is less than or equal to six. That's where most students will make mistakes. We need to change the sign. Uh, we'll subtract 10 from everything. Subtraction, you don't change signs again. Negative 15, um, divided or less than negative X, which is less than negative five. Well, we have negative 5, so now we change the signs of everything. And if you want to rewrite this, because it just looks a little funny, it's saying 5 is less than x, which is less than 15. Okay, on a number line, that's how it would look. Decimals, just plug them in your calculator. That's what I would do. Uh, minus 0.1, minus 0.1 minus point 0.1 uh, that means negative point 0.9 is less than point 
x, which is less than 0.9, divide by 0.3. Just don't leave that as your final answer. Your calculator can handle this. 0.9 negative divided by 0.3 is negative 3 less than x less than 3. Okay, don't be afraid of negative. Absolute values. Check for extraneous. Almost done as well. Um, absolute values. You split into two problems. Keep one the same. Um, flip and switch if needed the other. Keeping one the same. 3p plus 2 equals 7. Five thirds, don't let it scare you. And of course, flipping and switching the other side, um, 3p plus 2. So here's the switch. And that's what students will forget to do generally. p equals negative three check for extraneous solutions that again means you have to substitute five-thirds in 4p you need to substitute negative three in 4p as well okay so make sure you divorce key double check those if it doesn't equal the same it's extraneous uh, equals 3 fourteenths. Again, keep one. Flip switch. Don't be afraid of fractions. 4 sevenths. X minus 2 sevenths equals 3 fourteenths. Um, you can choose to work with fractions. You can choose to wipe them out. Um, myself, I'm going to multiply everything by, um, we'll say 7 here just to wipe fractions out. So that means I have 4x minus 2 equals um, 21 over 14. 1.5 add 2 and divide by 4 again I don't want to see that as an answer 3.5 divided by 4 your calculator can help um, seven eighths. Same idea over here. So this will be positive four x if I multiply everything by seven minus two equals negative one point five. And to add my two, leaving me with point five. And x equals 0.5 over 4, um, which is 1 eighth. So, 7 eighth, 1 eighth, Dvorsky double check for extraneous solutions, okay? Um, and last but not least, solving absolute value inequalities, very similar. You're going to want to keep and flip switch. X minus 5 greater than or equal to 1. X minus 5 less than or equal to negative 1. Flip 
everything in switching. Boom, boom. X is greater than or equal to 6. And boom, boom. Plus 5, plus 5. X is less than or equal to 4. You have those there. Um, flipping and switching, keeping the same. Uh, there should not be a Z there. I don't know why Z is hidden there. Um, 6 plus 5X less than or equal to 25. Now flip and switch, keep. Flip switch. 6 plus 5X is less than 25. And 6 plus 5X greater than or equal to negative 25. Subtract 6, subtract 6. 2019 is less than 5x. Oops, sorry, run out of space. x is equal to 19 fifths. Leave as a fraction. And subtract 6. Uh, x is greater than or equal to negative 31 over 5. Dvorsky double check all of your answers all the time. Um, the last ones might take you a little bit of work. But overall, yes, it might have taken some time. But if you take your time, which you have unlimited of, you certainly can do very well on this test, which I expect you all to do. So yes, it was longer winded, but if you took the time to review with me, thank you very much. Okay, make sure you enjoy your evening. Look back through your notes, look back through your journal as to things you need to pay attention to. I would particularly focus on things like the area and perimeter problem. Go back through this again if need be. And of course, enjoy the rest of your day. All right, guys.